So welcome to my talk on uh, AI without GPUs. This is uh, today, this part of the talk, I'm gonna be talking about using AMX CPUs on vSphere with Tanzu Kubernetes. So my name's Earl Ruby. Um, I'm an R&D engineer at Broadcom. I work on GPU and AI related projects at Broadcom. And I'm currently focused on enabling AI hardware acceleration on Intel, on Intel hardware on vSphere. This talk, I'm gonna talk about Intel AMX CPUs, why would you wanna use AMX, um, and then configuring Tanzu to use AMX instructions. So AMX is an AI accelerator built into Sapphire Rapids and Emerald Rapids Xeon CPUs. The new instructions available in these CPUs are designed to work on matrices to accelerate artificial intelligence and machine learning related workloads. Advanced matrix multipliers are integrated into every core in the CPU. If you purchase Sapphire Rapids or Emerald Rapids servers, you can run AI workloads on the CPUs without a separate GPU accelerator. And in vSphere 8 supports Intel AMX. And since AMX is built into Sapphire Rapids and Emerald Rapids Xeon CPUs, if you've bought new servers in the past year, you probably already have AMX CPUs in your data centers. AMX accelerates AI workloads if your software stack is configured to use AMX. AMX works with ML frameworks such as PyTorch, TensorFlow, Paddle Paddle, OpenVINO. And most popular open source data prep machine learning and deep learning frameworks are already optimized for Intel CPUs. So you can use the same tools to process workloads on CPUs that you use with GPUs. You don't have to change your tool sets. And to show you, I'm going to do a quick video here or a quick demo here. So this is out of the box video processing with OpenVINO and vSphere 8. So OpenVINO, um, if you're, if you're, I'm going to give you a quick demonstration on why this is why AMX is so powerful. So if you're running uh, neural networks on CPUs or at the edge, you'll hear the phrase quantization, and you may be wondering what that means. So neural networks use floating point numbers. And by converting floating point numbers to low bit width numbers, we can actually dramatically increase or decrease the memory and compute requirements of using neural networks. So uh, you can think of quantization as it's, it's the compression for neural networks. It's, it's not lossless compression, uh, but you do lose some accuracy in the process. So the next thing I want to show you, uh, we're using video processing running on an Intel Xeon 4 Sapphire Rapid CPU. In this case, I'm using OpenVINO Toolkit for compressing the neural network. Uh, we're using a set of Jupyter Notebooks and following a, this is following a tutorial from the OpenVINO GitHub site. So the QR code on the screen is linked to the OpenVINO instructions. So if you want to follow the link and try this on your own Sapphire Rapids Emerald Rapids CPUs, you can. Um, and this, I'm going to show what oh, this one here. Let's get this video started. So this. Um, Demo uses OpenVINO with Jupyter Notebooks to process a video and identify human beings in the video using the deep sort algorithm. And this is just the, the, the Jupyter Notebook here. Uh, so if you, want, if you um, go to that GitHub page that I just referenced, this is notebook number 407, person tracking. And the video I actually downloaded off the internet. It's just a, a, um, a public domain video of a, screen, of a street scene. And you can see uh, the deep, I've got a deep sort is processing the video a frame at a time. It's identifying the human beings in the video and, you know, showing the frame. So each person coming on is getting a tag with a number and it's picking them out of the crowd. A couple of things you may not notice. Um, video is being processed in real time. You can see that OpenVINO and deep sort are processing anywhere from 100 to 200 frames per second of video. What's not as obvious is this is running on a VM that's only been allocated eight vCPUs. Um, it's also only got 16 gigs of RAM. So it's got no GPUs, and we're only using a small fraction of the power of the host machine. So you, even that small fraction, performance is excellent. It's, it's just going right along, no problem. So that uh, is one of the powers of AMX. You can do things that a couple of years ago you would require G, CPUs to do, or require GPUs to do. Now you can just do it with CPUs. Is that because the OpenVINO is compressing it? The OpenVINO compresses the model, so it reduces the um, the memory requirements and uh, it speeds it up. Requirements, right? Increases performance. Um, 
it does, like I said, it does, it, it's basically a, a lossy compression, so you are losing some accuracy, but it's picking on people out of the crowd. So if it's if it's and accurate the monetization enough, is done ahead of time, right? Yeah, it's one, done, one, one done one time on the model before you before you run it. Okay. So last demo, I was showing what you can do with AMX Girl, you CPUs. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Tanzu actually had to be configured to support AMX. Is there something correct? Yeah, that has to be done to do that, or yes, that's what I was going to get in. So I was going to uh, yep. <laughs> Hence the talk. Um, yeah, so, uh, so the last demo was just on AMX <clears throat> CPUs in a small VM, but uh, you can also do this on containerized workloads, and you can also run AMX powered workloads on Kubernetes. So Tanzu is VMware's distribution of Kubernetes. It's been optimized to run on vSphere. Uh, it takes advantage of vSphere's lifecycle management tools, so you can manage Kubernetes deployments and upgrades. Um, it's got vSAN for storage, NSX for managing uh, network micro segmentation and security. Uh, you can use VMware AVI for high availability load balancing, VRS for adding, removing, or upgrading hosts without impacting the running Kubernetes cluster. Um, so <clears throat> if you want to make AMX work on vSphere, um, for vSphere, you, you know, once again, you need hardware with Sapphire Rapids or Emerald Rapids CPUs. The guest VMs have to be running the Linux kernel 5.16 or later, 5.19 recommended. Guest VMs have to be using hardware version 20. Hardware version 20 is the hardware version that virtualizes the AMX instructions. So if you're not running hardware version 20 on your VMs, you can't use AMX. Uh, hardware version 20 is only available in ESXi 80U2, uh, vCenter, and vCenter 80U2. Um, so if you want to run Tanzu, Kernel requirement also applies to all of your Tanzu worker nodes. Um, so you also have to be running, to use AMX on the Tanzu worker nodes, those worker nodes also have to be running kernel 5.16 or later. Uh, Tanzu comes with a set of pre-built, automatically updated node images called Tanzu Kubernetes releases, or TKRs. And these are each image is basically an OVA that deploys a Kubernetes control node or a worker node it's a node is just a Linux VM with a specific version of Kubernetes installed on it and a specific Linux kernel. Uh, VMware has released a TKR with a kernel with the kernel needed for SPR AMX. And the reason, and I'm, this is, uh, it gets a little complicated on this one. And the, and part of the reason is the the Tanzu team because we are d deploying uh, Tanzu and it's very stable, fault tolerant, trusted way to run Kubernetes, we want it to be very stable. So Tanzu typically deploys only with a, um, an LTS kernel, or long-term long maintenance kernel, um, long-term support kernel, here we go, LTS. And uh, the um, we typically produce TKRs either on the Photon OS distribution of Linux or on Ubuntu. And Ubuntu 2204 ships with a 5.15 kernel. So Ubuntu 2204 server out of the box with the uh, LTS kernel cannot support, cannot run AMX. Um, Ubuntu 2404, which will be released soon, will have a, a, a six dot something kernel. They haven't announced the final one yet, so it, it'll work fine. And Photon 5 uses a six, uh, six um, dot O series kernel. So, um, uh, so right now, the, the Tanzu team is working on a TKR to release on Photon 5. It's not out yet. And because Ubuntu 2404 is not released yet, they have not released on that. But what they did do was come up with a 2204 that they use the HWE kernel for. Um, so the HWE is Ubuntu's hardware, um, what is it? Hardware enablement kernel. There we go. Had to get the right word. Uh, so the hardware enablement kernel, um, they basically track the non-LTS versions of Ubuntu. So right now they're like, I think it's a kernel 6.2. Um, so our Tanzu team released a TKR that uses the hardware enablement kernel. Because it's a short support cycle on hardware enablement kernels, it's a six-month support cycle, not a two-year cycle. We wanted to make sure our customers had to make a couple extra steps to get it so that they weren't just automatically updating it in case they wanted to stay on an older kernel or a stable kernel. So Earl, yes, nothing sir. excites me more than 
Linux kernel uh, version. Good, you came to the right time. Uh, <laughs> but the from a governance perspective, so if we abstract this away from a governance perspective, this is a platform team concern, right? Mm -hmm. so what uh, version of Linux kernel is running the pods? Or from a governance perspective, is a platform infrastructure team perspective. From a developer, since we're talking about Tanzu mm -hmm. and packaging software, from a developer perspective, I'm not changing my workflow. Am I the, from a packaging a container? Do no. I have to worry about these details? You are you are not um, unless your unless your container is interacting with hardware that requires specific drivers that only work with specific kernels. <clears throat> so if you are Sorry, yeah. I didn't get Go ahead. Can you talk? Oh, no, that was it. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, this is also um, a little bit based on growing up from where Tanzu came from, right? Mm -hmm. so, though historically it was kind of a rule of your own, you could you could put the piece parts together. N now it's more man to Keith's point, it's more managed. So it's mm -hmm. managed in this is all transparent. Like you don't need to see the, any of this. This is just deployed as part of the latest release. Um, the, it depends on you know, who you are. So if you are the uh, the system maintainer, if you're the system administrator for the Tanzu system and you are deploying new versions of Tanzu, you're going to need to know about this. But if you are a developer who is deploying containers, you don't, don't care. care. Yeah. 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 Um, so as a system administrator, if you're setting this up, these are the things you would have to do. Um, there's a second content library you'd have to add. So this, this is what keeps um, our customers who want the stable release from accidentally getting this. So you have to you basically have to opt in by adding this content library. Um, QR code takes you to a technical brief I helped author, which goes through all of these steps in detail. So if you want more information later on, follow that. Um, to add the content library, you just go to vSphere client <clears throat> in vCenter, content libraries create. And then you just have to add this specific subscription URL into the content as your uh, content library subscription. And you're good to go. That will that will download the new TKR onto your vCenter and have it available for for deployment for Kubernetes. Um, you want to verify that the new content library is working. There's a command you can run: uh, get Tanzu Kubernetes releases or TKRs. It'll give you a list of all the TKRs available on the system. You want the one with HWE kernel in the name. So the hardware enablement kernel is the one that works with the AMX CPUs. Um, you want to create a new VM class to, to use this new image. So we set one up here. Uh, we called it AMX VM class, 26 vCPUs. We reserved uh, all the CPU resources for it. Um, gave it memory of 50. You, you can reserve the memory if you want. You don't have to. You can, you can oversubscribe. Uh, so memory is not required. And then... Um, since all TKRs have to work with both vSphere 7 and vSphere 8, the TKRs we're releasing will continue to be released with version 19 uh, embedded in them, but you can change the version of the TKR after it's been uh, loaded. So if you want to be running, um, so if you are downloading this TKR and you're running it on ESXiI 8 or any TKR on ESXiI 8 and you want it to be hardware version 20, you can select the compatibility. And this is a lie um, because at the moment, our vCenter API is actually a little bit ahead of the vCenter UI. So this, uh, you know, in some days, if you're watching this today, you won't see this screen. If you're watching this sometime in the future, you will see the screen. So depending on when you watch this video, um, you may or may not see the screen. Anyhow, this is uh, the, uh, you have to, in this one, you said the ESX i or later, that's, that's hardware version 20. So in the meantime, um, if you are, oh, sorry, I went too fast. In the meantime, if you're doing this today, um, the, AP, the, the, uh, the API exists to support this. You just have to actually call it with this JSON string, and I'm not going to try to read that out over the uh, on a video broadcast. So once again, QR code, um, follow that, and, you, and it'll give you the instructions on what to post, and it'll actually set the VM class to hardware version 20. So you, can, so you can only currently today trigger that programmatically through the automation API on vSphere? You can, I haven't tried it with the automation API, I've just tried it with the, uh, with the, uh, that API. Okay. 
So but I'm sure you you probably could. But programmatically only today. You'll, you'll see, yeah, programmatically you have to do it one time yeah. when you create the VM class and then you're done. So yeah. And it's just against the class and then any machines that spawn off that will inherit. Version. Yeah, we'll inherit it. Yeah, once, once the class is set up with the hardware version 20, any VMs, any VMs generated with that hardware class will get yeah. version 20. Yeah, I think for the container audience and the, if, if you're comfortable working with Kubernetes, this is not, maybe even your preferred method to do it. So I don't yeah. know how many people actually go through the. Like I said, it's coming soon. So better UI is coming soon, but the, uh, uh, today if you want to try this, you want to experiment with it, you can. Yeah, you, you, the UI experience is not, uh, the graphical UI experience isn't something I hear from this crowd that they want an improvement okay. from. All right. Um, then you know, what is, the next step is just create a cluster definition file. Um, this is what defines your Tanzu Kubernetes cluster. This is one I use all the time. Um, it's fairly, fairly my, my stock d deployment. Um, I've got three control plane nodes, three worker nodes. Uh, you can see the couple things I want to point out up here. Um, in the in the annotation, there's a uh, it shows that the TKR is an Ubuntu based TKR up there at the top or under annotations. That lets uh, so when it deploys, it knows that it's an Ubuntu based TKR. So if you're using any of the Ubuntu based TKRs from from uh, available from VMware, you, you want that line in there. Um, down there under spec under topology, there's a reference. I've got the name of the HWE kernel TKR. I got that from the earlier step where I listed all the TKRs out. And I'm listing it both on the control plane node and at the bottom for the worker nodes. So they both use the same image. It's They're both using the HWE kernel image. Um, don't really need it for the control plane because the control plane is uh, not going to be running AMX. Um, Commands, is, that's what can happen on the worker nodes. So on the control plane, I'm actually using a guaranteed small VM class, which is not going to be hardware version 20, but it doesn't matter. Uh, the worker nodes, however, are using my AMX VM class that we just created. Um, so that will have hardware version 20 on the worker nodes. They'll be built with the HWE kernel, so they'll be all set to run um, AMX commands. And one other thing I did uh, on the worker nodes, I added an extra volume. Uh, for varlib container d and that's just a, a place for docker images to live so they don't fill up the root partition um so in addition to installing the tkr the the rest the technical brief will also walk you through some basic sizing requirements on your hosts and it'll also show you how to deploy an, a llama 2 7 billion llm on tanzu with sapphire rapid cpus so if you want an end-to-end -end walkthrough on actually setting up an LLM and running it on a Tanzu cluster, this is a great place to start. And when we did that, here's the testing results. So we actually, this is some performance results. Uh, we're testing the Llama 2 7 million inference running on a single fourth gen Xeon CPU with vSphere 8 across a number of concurrent instances and token sizes and across all input token sizes and up to three instances per socket uh, can deliver inference with an average latency under 100 milliseconds, which is except which shown earlier, you know, that's the acceptable threshold for chatbot responsiveness. And once again, more resources, uh, VMware AI ML, that's our, our main site. That'll take you to lots of links with your, about, about these subjects. And thank you.